Hi, I'm Ranger Adriana. Welcome to another edition of Ranger Minutes. Visitors come to national parks to be inspired, to find awe, to transcend the mundane. And one of the amazing things that happens here at Glacier Bay is that glaciers calve. We have glaciers here in Glacier Bay because we have mountains and we have precipitation. The tall mountains that surround us catch these storms that come in off the Pacific and all these storms fall as snow. Snow builds up to such an extent that the sheer weight compacts the snow into ice, into these rivers of ice. And here, some of these rivers of ice are long enough that they reach the sea. The glaciers that reach the sea are called tidewater glaciers. Tidewater glaciers touch the water that changes with the tide, the ocean. And it is the ocean that makes glaciers calve. Water is more efficient at absorbing heat from the ice due to its high heat capacity, its ability to absorb heat. The faster melting erodes the foundation of the end of the glacier until the ice breaks away from the face. So mundane a description for such a remarkable event. And this event is part of what draws so many people here every year to Glacier Bay National Park. Over 400,000 people come to Glacier Bay to witness glaciers calving and to be surrounded by one of the last remaining wild places on our planet. If you travel by ship, it's likely that you'll visit the Marjorie Glacier for about an hour. It is a moment in time to experience the drama, the inspiration, the power of the natural world. Each calving event is a manifestation of a powerful interaction between ocean and ice. You can use your imagination to see what this river of ice really represents. Snow fell on mountaintops miles away, a hundred years ago or more. A staggering amount of snow fell, built up, and compacted into ice. It takes around 3,500 feet of snow to build up to create a river of ice 350 feet thick, like what we find here at the end of the Marjorie Glacier. You can use your senses to experience the environment in which glaciers flow. Feel the rain on your face. Feel the cool, moist air that carries the potential for glacier-building snow. Glaciers not only draw humans to see such a breathtaking event, there are also animals that are lured to the glacier's face. Harbor seals haul out on icebergs as safe places to give birth to their pups. They can be safer from land predators like the bear and the wolf. And the floating ice and murky water by the glaciers may hide those harbor seals from orca, the killer whale. Black-legged kittiwakes feed on the fish that are churned up from the deep by the falling ice. Some even build their nests nearby to raise their chicks on the fish they catch. In most, but not all cases, calving glaciers are retreating. The ice is calving and melting faster than it can be replaced by falling snow. In fact, Glacier Bay has experienced the fastest retreat of glaciers in recorded history. The glaciers retreated 65 miles in only 250 years. In the mid-1700s, Glacier Bay was not a bay. It was a riverbed for a river of ice that is estimated to have been 2,500 feet thick. The waterway we explore today was revealed from under that river of ice in just 250 years. Though that rapid retreat was not due to human actions and choices, in today's warming world, glaciers continue to retreat worldwide, making the glaciers of Glacier Bay that much more precious.
Perhaps the magnificence of Glacier Bay and the calving of the ice can inspire us all to action and change. Perhaps it is the tremendous size of the pieces of ice. Some of them are as big as buildings. Perhaps it is that amazing sound, that sound of distant thunder. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Maybe it's the size of the splash as the ice hits the water. Sometimes the water flies hundreds of feet into the air. Whatever it is, whatever it is about calving, it reminds us of the beauty and the power of nature. It reminds us how much we love this world. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Glacier Bay's Ranger Minutes.